Good morning. Um, day three of the coronavirus mindfulness challenge. I'm here with my uh, cup of um, green tea with mint. And for okay. some reason, my uh, <laughs> and, and my phone's just kicked in, and Siri's just told me about day three of the coronavirus. Um, thank you for joining me. I'm a little bit bunged up, but it's okay. I've only got a common cold. I haven't got anything more serious. God bless you out there. I hope you're all staying safe. Um, just a quick update from my neck of the woods. Um, we are now in, 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 in severe lockdown and it looks as if I, I call it the hockey stick um, because it looks like a hockey stick in terms of how the, uh, how the graph is going with cases and deaths and all of those sort of things. But we have to contextualize it. There's only a very small proportion of people who have severe underlying health conditions at the moment are the ones that seem to be passing. Most of us have it and it passes no problem at all and we have to try again i'll use the same message day one day three day six build your immune systems don't get stressed don't allow your immune systems to drop and try and stay focused and present in the moment to take away any of the anxiety or the depression or any any of the fears that you've got it's it's absolutely understandable for our human uh, mind I, you know i call it my muggle mind um to be able to be kicking in and giving us a fight or flight scenario the reality of the situation is is you know over a period of time this will pass let's do what the government tells us stay inside wash your hands eat healthily build your immune system give yourself the best chance of fighting it or avoiding it so that's the um, coronavirus um, information uh, put out there for you. And it's a difficult time. We're going into self-isolation here now, locking it down, not for any reason because any of us have got the coronavirus. I just think we're at that stage now where over the next coming two or three, four weeks, we're going to stay inside. That's my wife, my daughter uh, and my son-in-law. Um, the sun is coming up over South Wales, which is just coming into my face here, which is beautiful. And today on day three, um, we're going to talk about meditation and the brain. OK, because day one, you're all excited and you get involved in it. Yeah, this is great mindfulness. Day two, you come in and I try and debunk some of the myths so you can just put yourself in the right frame of mind. or I can't do it. It's fine. Everybody, you know, we all go through those phases. And the next phase really is about, well, yeah, OK, I'm doing this now. But what's really happening? Why am I really doing this? Well, we know through countless amounts of research that um, how positive emotions look in the brain and conversely, how negative emotions uh, are looking in the brain. If you're having positive emotions or you have a, a positive outlook on life, there's higher activity in the left of the frontal cortex, which is the front of your brain here on the left, okay? And when people see higher activity as a ratio from the left to right, it normally says that people are more optimistic, they're more creative, they're more joy, they have a bit more vitality in their lives. There are other people who have higher activity in their right of the frontal cortex, which can show signs of depression, anxiety, worry, and stress, okay? Now, what happens there is, is that some people, you know, that the, the ratio between left and right and right and left can vary based on the experiences you're having around you. So, you know, if you win the lottery, um, your left-hand side is going to be going crazy. If, if you're really worried about the coronavirus, the right-hand side is going to be going crazy. And the idea here is, through mindfulness, is that we build um, higher activity in the left than we do the right. And there was a study of a Tibetan meditator. And when they looked at his brain, they could see there was a huge difference from the left to right ratio. Now, the question here is obviously, was he born happy? Is he naturally a happy person? And the mindfulness has only activated and amplified it. Or did he actually amplify it, cultivate it, and build a new thought process from the left ratio to the right through mindfulness? And there's so many studies out there, but there was a random assessment of 45 people, which, you know, 45 people, it's not 45,000 people, but it's 45 people. There's much bigger studies. And when they undertook mindfulness for four months, they saw significant differences from the left to right ratio. Significant 
difficulties, di di differences. Now this is huge for me. We've only on day three, so we've got a little while to go yet, or maybe you've been doing mindfulness for years and you feel it, okay? But what they found, which was really, really interesting, is that individual people have what's called a happiness set point. And what does that mean? Well, you have a point in your brain where your happiness levels are. And you have that from birth. So some people are naturally more happier than others because of this happiness set point. So as I said, if you win the lottery, they're going to have a blip of happiness. But 12 months later, you're going to come back to your happiness set point. If the opposite happens, if you have a, a traumatic experience or something really fundamental changes in your life, maybe like my dad, for instance, passing, that we'll have a drop in that happiness set point. But at some point, whether it's 12 months, we'll start to get back to that happiness set point. So we're born with it. And new research shows that we can change the change in our exterior okay, winning the lottery, um, uh, grief passing traumatic experiences has effect on your happiness. But it comes back to a set point eventually. But what's been found is, is if we change the interior, it has an effect forever and ever. Amen. It's been scientifically now proven that we can change our basic levels and base levels of happiness through changing the interior landscape through mindfulness and loving kindness. It's been proven, not in three days maybe, but it's been proven. We can shift our levels of happiness. Happiness can be grown by changing the structure of our mind through mindfulness practice. Now it's called neuroplasticity, I think they never say this word, plasticity, I still can't say it, I can't say umbrella either, I just did, neuroplasticity, okay, which is repeated experiences shape our brain. There is a great study of London taxi drivers, and when they, they analysed their brain, the part where they had to have navigation, okay, is much higher than anybody else. And the reason for that is they have to learn over 23,000 different routes and roads to be able to pass their test. And every day they live it. They practice, they repeat. That part of their brain, navigation, is much bigger than anybody else's. Okay, it's called cortical thickening. Okay, we actually thicken the cortex of our brain and it takes place through practice. So in the earlier ones where we said what we practice becomes stronger is absolutely correct. If you imagine your brain having these super highways of habit that have been grooved through years and years and years of doing the same thing, thinking the same way, walking, doing everything about us the same way, we've grooved, we've, we've, we've grooved that path in our mind. How can we change that? Well, we know that mindfulness can now dig a new road. We can look at the cortical pathway. We can build new roads. We can shift down a different highway. And everything we do through this mindfulness course, we strengthen that pathway. We create a new mindful superhighway of happiness that allows us to create positive, happy, uh, positive habits. But more importantly, it pushes our happiness set point to a position where we become happier where we have less anxiety, where we have less stress, where we have less depression, where we have more compassion, where we have more empathy. Mindfulness has been statistically, scientifically proven. I got to put my teeth in this morning, okay? And that is there for us to be able to use. So we're on day three. Day one was great, day two. You're going to get to a point where you might think, oh, ah, oh, oh, have I got time? Stay with it. Okay, stay with it. It is proven you can improve your happiness by, with, by altering your interior landscape through neuroplasticity, I still can't say it, plasticity, right? By cultivating mindfulness. What you practice becomes stronger. When you sit now on this loving kindness uh, meditation that we recorded on Monday, when you sit with it today, you will be strengthening your cortical thickening and creating 
a new highway. It takes time to make a motorway, <laughs> okay? A superhighway, a freeway, wherever you are in the world. Be patient with it, sit with it, conduct it, and see the difference. I hope this makes sense. Day four will be tomorrow. Thank you very much for joining me. There's one last thing I'd like to say, and that is this. We all need at this moment in time a little bit of help, support, love, and importantly, talking. So if you're sat at home today feeling a bit bored, phone someone, have a chat with someone, get on to, you know, get on to Skype, get on to Zoom, get on to a video conference. There's no need to be lonely now because we have lots of people around us. I'm here. Hello, how are you? Okay, send me a message below, but talk to each other. It's been, again, scientifically proven that if somebody is having um, uh, uh, anxiety or whatever, it reduces greatly by talking to another person. So reach out to somebody today, accept the call from somebody today, but importantly, let's keep talking. We are stronger together. I hope this makes sense. Enjoy the meditation next. And I'll see you in a few moments when you've completed it. Okay? So I want you to close your eyes. I'm going to put a nice image up. And I'm going to sound a bell for us to start. And all I want you to do now is focus on your breath. Breathing in. And breathing out. Breathing in and breathe it out and just focus on where your breath is. Where do you feel it most? Is it through your nostrils? Is it on your t-shirt? Is it on your jumper? Where do you feel? Do you feel your, your belly moving in and out? Breathing in and breathing out. And to start this, we're gonna offer loving kindness to ourselves. And I want you to focus on the intention of these words. And I want you to continually repeat these words and if you have a thought that comes in, you welcome it, you love it, you let it go, and you come back to the mantra. So as we're breathing in, I want you to say these words. Breathing in, may I be safe. Breathing out. Breathing in, may I be happy. Breathing out. Breathing in, may I be healthy. Breathing out. Breathing in, may I live with ease. Breathing out. Repeat the mantra. May I be safe. May I be happy. May I be healthy. May I live with ease. Continue that mantra as you're breathing in and you're breathing out. And if you have any thoughts that come in, you welcome them, you love them, you let them go, and you come back to your mantra. May I be safe. May I be happy. May I be healthy. May I live with ease. Breathing in and breathing out. May I be safe. May I be happy. May I be healthy. May I live with ease. Welcome this beautiful love into your life. To be kind to yourself. To connect in with yourself to love yourself, to heal yourself. May I be safe, may I be happy, may I be healthy, may I live with ease. May I be safe, may I be happy, may I be healthy, may I live with ease. Now what I'd like you to do is just, with your eyes closed, choose someone in your life that you love or someone that inspires you, someone you think about, who you're grateful for. And I want you to picture that person in your mind. And on this occasion, as you're breathing in, you say simply, may you be safe. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you live with ease. This is loving kindness for somebody else who is someone you love, someone inspires you, put them in your mind 
see them and set the intention of may you be safe, may you be happy, may you be healthy, may you live with ease. Breathing in and breathing out. And don't forget, if you have a thought, just let it welcome in. Hold it. Don't put any judgment on it. Accept it, acknowledge it, let it go. And come back to your mantra for this person that you love. May you be safe. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you live with ease. Breathing in and breathing out. May you be safe, may you be happy, may you be healthy, and may you live with ease. Now the focus, we're going to focus on someone you know who's having a difficult time at the moment, maybe someone who's ill. And we're going to offer them kindness. So if there's somebody you know who is in self-isolation or isn't feeling very well at the moment, I want you to place their in your intention in your mind, with them in your mind, and you say again, may you be safe, may you be happy, may you be healthy, and may you live with ease. Breathing in and breathing out. This is somebody who you know who's having a difficult time at the moment, who may be ill. Set the intention of that person, put them in your mind's eye. And as you do, you say to yourself, may you be safe, may you be happy, may you be healthy, and may you live with ease. And if you find your attention or your mind wanders, don't worry. Just love it, let it go and return back to your phrases, your mantra. May you be safe, may you be happy, may you be healthy, and may you live with ease. These mantras are now your anchor. May you be safe, may you be happy, may you be healthy, and may you live with ease. And what I'd like you to do is choose someone in your life that you might have difficulty with or have some tension with or have had an issue with or something hasn't sat right between the both of you for a little bit of time. This one can be difficult, but we set the attention and we put them in our mind's eye and we say to them in our mantra, breathing in and breathing out, may you be safe, may you be happy, may you be healthy, and may you live with ease. And again, if something, a thought comes in, I want you to allow it in, accept it, acknowledge it, put no judgment, love it and let it go. And come back to your anchor, your mantra. For the person who you may have had difficulty with, have had an argument with, there's some tension between you. Set the attention, put them in your mind's eye and say, may you be safe, may you be happy, may you be healthy, and may you live with ease. And if at any point you find that difficult, then you can just direct it back to yourself. May I be safe. May I be happy. May I be healthy. May I live with ease. Now I'd like you at this moment to direct your loving kindness, your attention and your intention to all forms of life, people, animals, all beings, those people who need it most all over the world at this very difficult time. And I want you to say for them, may all beings be safe. May all beings be happy. May all beings be healthy. May all beings live with ease. Breathing in, and breathing out. And again, if you have any thoughts, you let them in, you let them go, and off you go. May all beings be safe, 
May all beings be happy. May all beings be healthy. May all beings live with ease. Breathing in and breathing out. May all beings be happy. May all beings be healthy. May all beings be live with ease. May all beings be safe. May all beings be happy. May all beings be healthy. May all beings live with ease. Take a deep breath in and as you do, I just want you to slowly just recenter yourself on the chair and get your sense of awareness and feel your twiggle your fingers or, or move your toes and come back into the room and open your eyes. So I hope you enjoyed that again. Don't forget, mind, okay? Please give someone a call, talk to them, help them and be with them. But importantly for me as well, I hope when you woke up this morning you went, good morning, Julian. I love you. Good morning, Julian. I love you. We know now, we now know that we can change our happiness set points by cultivating loving kindness and mindfulness. And that's really important. So I look forward to seeing you tomorrow in day four. Stay safe, eat healthy food, get your vitamins in, wash your hands and keep drinking hot drinks as much as you can because the virus sits in your throat. This washes it down into your stomach and kills it if, on the off chance, you have, you currently contract the virus. But hey, I'm enjoying my green tea. God bless you. Be love and give love. Stay safe. Take care. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.